All right, welcome to Politically Homeless. My name is Dave. I am the Politically Homeless Man. Thank you for watching this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already done that and share the videos if you want to, all right? <laughs> WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has pled guilty to a single charge of espionage in front of a U.S. judge and has walked free after a 12-year battle against extradition to the United States. So the plea deal that he decided to take ends all of that, and he is a free man. This I didn't have on my bingo card yesterday. When I heard this, I was like, what? Um, because, you know, the Twitter sphere, the x uh all of the social media... People were out there saying, yeah, Julian Assange, they, he's he's walking free. He's now 52 years old. He spent the last five years in a high security prison. And from what I understand, that place is brutal. Uh, murderers and rapists and real violent criminals and so forth. Uh, and seven years before that, he was in an Ecuadorian embassy in the British capital trying to avoid arrest. So... He did what he could do to stay out of jail. Um, and then they put him in jail anyway. And now he's a free man because he took this plea deal. So Assange agreed to plead guilty to a felony charge. <laughs> All the Trump people are going to come out and say, yeah, he's a felon just like Trump now. They're both the same. Remember, okay, here's a little sidebar here. Remember when Trump was campaigning and he was talking about WikiLeaks and he was like, I love WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks is great. Keep giving me that information. And then he becomes the president. And then someone must have tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, uh, Mr. President, um, Ixnay on the Wiki WikiLeaks. Uh, shh, quiet. You can't talk about WikiLeaks anymore. We hate WikiLeaks. The Pentagon hates it. The CIA hates it. The FBI is mad at you. Stop it. It was okay during the campaign. And uh, all of that stuff, by the way, helped Trump beat Hillary Clinton because um, they had dirt on Hillary and they presented that. And this was before the media just fully blacked out things. Um, it was right on the cusp of where they were trying to get control of the narrative. I think the reason they didn't you know, clamp down more is because they just thought Trump was a joke and there's no way he was going to win. But um, yeah, he won. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing I do like about the whole Donald Trump presidency and his rise to power and so forth is that he just freaked out the establishment. He And I'm not saying that he's anti-establishment. I think the more I know about Donald Trump, the more I realize that he's kind of part of the establishment. He's just the not so obvious part of the establishment. And he's convinced everybody that he's not one of them, but he's willing to play their games so long as he can, you know, get power back or retain his power. And we'll see what happens. There's a little debate coming up. I'm really not that interested in the debate. Um, this news about Julian Assange was far more interesting to me. Um, is he going to go back to WikiLeaks? That's the question. Um, supposedly, he, he has to delete all of this information that he had collected. And I, I don't know. I don't know. This is really scary, though, for independent journalism because independent journalism is definitely putting out better information. Um, independent journalism is skeptical of power. Um, the current bunch of mainstream media, whatever, okay, they're all in the tank uh, with the government. Um, if somebody says something a little bit odd, they fact check it and then they prove it wrong. Uh, even if it's correct, they find a way to say, yeah, it's right, but it, it's it's malinformation. It's not good for the country to know about. And then that's how they're dealing with people who are dissenting and aren't going to play this game. That's why I don't trust either of the two major party candidates. Biden obviously needs to drop out. He won't uh, because the Democrats want power. 
Uh, so they're going to keep him in there. I think there's still a chance they might pull the plug on Joe Biden. We'll see. That's one thing this debate will determine. You know, Biden will be hopped up. Uh, I've heard rumors that he's going to take Adderall. OK, that's not at all surprising. Trump, I think, should be on something, too, because he's been off message. He isn't the Trump of 2016, even though the whole MAGA world will tell you he's better than ever. He's reverse aging. I've heard all of this crazy stuff lately. Um, supposedly, he knows who his vice president is going to be, but he hasn't told anyone yet. And nobody other than him. Uh, himself knows. <laughs> so those are interesting things. But it's it's not more interesting than Julian Assange, and he exposed just criminal activity. And then he gets thrown in jail. Imagine doing the right thing. Like, I know that they're going to blow up <clears throat> this building. And I'm going to tell people about it. And then you get thrown in jail for telling people the truth about something that could have saved lives. This is what's frustrating for people who examine this and they say, okay, so you can't be a truth teller today. You can't have differing opinions either. That's another one where you could be thrown in jail. Um, and there's a lot of collusion, like platforms like YouTube. Sorry, YouTube. Uh, YouTube banned me for two weeks here for um, alleged uh, medical misinformation because it didn't line up with the World Health Organization. Isn't this a company that's based in Silicon Valley? Uh, wh who's their, what's their loyalty to? That shows a real globalist mindset. Sorry again, YouTube, but you're a United States company. Why not show a little solidarity with your home country? I know you're a global entity. You could move operations to China or to wherever, and you'd still be Google, you know? Um, I don't think Google could operate uh, outside of Silicon Valley. I think it's just, it, that's the place where there's quite a bit of demonic activity. <laughs> just, it's sad, but this is who basically pays me. Um, and I've been working pretty hard for this outfit for a number of years, and uh, I don't agree with their philosophy. It's too bad. I mean, if I did videos about cats falling off of tables or whatever, they'd love me because it's the mindless crap uh, that gets them the most revenue and is the most innocuous and it doesn't disturb their political narrative. So yeah, don't talk about Julian Assange. Don't talk about how he had all of the goods, all of the information about uh, what our government was doing and he exposed that. Uh, that used to be called journalism. Now it's called espionage. So uh, I'm really happy that Julian is out um, some people will say, well, he took this, look, you were in jail. If you were in jail for that long, you would have said uncle at that point. You know, I want to see my wife. I want to see my kids. I want to get out of here. I've had enough. Um, that, that is like some form of torture. And in a normal world, you could sue people and say, what did you do to me? That was cruel and unusual. All I did was dump some information out there and the news media of course didn't validate or investigate only the indie journalists went out there and reported this stuff all the other major so-called major news outlets yeah they weren't going to touch anything that assange had to say but trump remember i love wikileaks now i don't like wikileaks all right i'm not going to talk about it they told me to shut up and so you know, if uh, WikiLeaks was still fully functional right now, <laughs> I'm sure there'd be a ton of information about both Trump and Biden at this stage. Um, but we're not going to know the truth about this because nobody does um, skeptical reporting anymore. What they do is tribal reporting. If this helps my tribe, I'm going to talk about it. If it doesn't help my tribe, then and this is on both sides. I mean, Donald Trump could cure cancer, and CNN would say, Donald Trump's evil. He cured cancer. Uh, he should have let the pharmaceutical companies do that. What is he doing that? Why is he doing that for? Um, same with Biden. Biden, you know, um, this happened when Joe Biden was president. You could say, well, it's a plea deal. 
Um, and it's not like he, they just set him free, but you know, he made the stop there in the South Pacific and then went on to Australia. They didn't try to detain him or anything. So, and the other thing with Biden is, yeah, he ended the war in Afghanistan. A lot of people forget that. Yeah. Was it a debacle as far as the way we got out of there? I'm so tired of the conservatives. Well, it was a botched exit. How many lives, okay, were saved since the exit until now? The exit was bad, right? But we're no longer spending trillions. We just shifted that money, by the way. So, yeah, you could say Biden got us out of Afghanistan, but he got us into Ukraine. And certainly people will complain about all the money we're sending to Israel, too. Although people complain more about Ukraine than Israel. For some reason, not sure why. Um, there are big time lobbying organizations like APAC in this country that will sell you, if you're a congressman or the president or whoever, they'll sell it to you all day long. And by the end of their presentation, you'll be like, yeah, we're going to send 100 billion more because you guys can't win without our weapons. And it's really going to help our economy our wartime, our war-based economy, and that's why we keep sending money to Ukraine and Israel and the lobbying groups. They, they are stronger on the side of Israel, obviously, than the side of Ukraine. The Ukraine stuff is just about Vladimir Putin um, and this whole BRICS thing and this whole breaking up of the New World Order, which I think that's what BRICS is doing. And... Um, Julian Assange, I'm sure, is is all over this <laughs> or will be soon. Uh, whether he talks about it or not is is another situation. But let's celebrate. Um, Julian Assange is free. And, and that's good news. It's just way overdue. And it really exposes the corruption in our own government. God bless everyone. Thanks for watching Politically Homeless. I am your Politically Homeless man, Dave, and I will see you soon.